Yo, what's up guys? It is Flood here. We're going over lecture six today, and this is about VOD reviewing. So I've, I feel like VOD reviewing is a good, good episode because a lot of teams get this wrong, and it leads to a lot of internal conflict and discussions. The point of VOD review is to learn, it's not to argue. So let's try and figure out some ways that can help us learn instead of creating internal conflict. All right, so when we identify problems, we're going to use a 2D analysis website. It's called twire.gg, if you've never heard of it. It has a lot of the craft and events, and a lot of scrim servers have their uh, API linked to this website. It's a really good website, so go check it out. But when we discuss problems and we're reviewing as a team, we need to separate uh, our VOD review into two categories. We have, first of all, the decision. So when we make a decision, was it the right one? Like from a third party perspective, like taking a step back, was the play that we committed to the right one? Should we have even done that? So that's what we should be thinking about. Should we have even taken this fight? Like what should we have actually done on the more macro side? Like, was this the right thing to do? And then after we've discussed if it was even the right thing to do, regardless if we did it or not, we can then move on to the outcome, right? So we can identify first if we should have even done it, and then if we did do it, we can then analyze how it maybe went wrong. So how do we lose players? What were our comms like? The micro things that affected the outcome. So by splitting this up, we can actually analyze our games a lot deeper instead of just focusing on how we died, right? Because if we just focus on how we died, we're never going to learn when to take when to take fights, when to take compounds, when to scale. Like we're not going to learn the more macro side of things. We're going to be so tunneled on the micro and that's going to lead to arguments because you're going to be saying like why did you die and whatnot when maybe we shouldn't have even taken the fight to begin with. So the first part of VOD review is really identifying the problems and splitting them up into two categories, decisions and outcomes. So once we break them down, they really fall into two categories, micro errors and macro errors. So micro errors is breaking the game down to its fundamentals and analyzing the small things that could impact overall outcomes, right? So when we think about micro, we're thinking about tiny things, right? Like comms, what did we communicate to our teammates? Where were we individually positioned? Were we in the right spot? Were we grouped together? Can our teammate trade us if we peak a ridge? So stacking and, and being close to each other. Did we whiff? Everyone whiffs. I whiffed so bad today that I just instantly left the server. Happens, right? Then we have utility. Did we use utility? Did we die with smokes, nades, stuns? We really need to analyze what we had and what we could do to solve a problem, right? So micro is honestly not the, it should never be the main focus of a VOD review because you are never going to run into the same situation exactly twice in PUBG. Like you might, but it's very, very unlikely, right? But the problem with my, analyzing micro mistakes is that they tend to be quite confrontational when you talk to your teammates, right? You're going to say like, hey, you made mistakes. Like, no, I didn't. Like, oh, yes, you did, right? So we don't want to do that. We want to Focus on the things that we can improve on. So comms, did we say what we were doing? Did we ask questions to our teammates? Were we positioned in a way that actually helped our teammates? Were we holding hands with our teammates so we could trade? Aim is completely irrelevant. If you have the right idea and you missed shots, your teammates cannot be mad at you because that's just kind of dickish. Anyway, utility, did we die with smokes, nades or stuns, right? These are the small things that do add up and can impact outcomes so we want to focus on these from, a f like, you want to take a step back and look at it. You don't want to harp on these micro errors too much because they're probably not going to happen again. But if they do happen again, that's when you can start to identify trends, right? So this is micro errors. Don't put too much emphasis on this as it can lead to uh, disagreements with teammates. And we never want that in VOD reviews because they will become unproductive almost immediately. All right, when we talk about macro errors, we need to think about, like, team positioning errors that increase the likelihood of negative outcomes to occur. So when we're talking about macro, when you think about like, how good were our splits? Were they defendable? Were they close enough that we could regroup? Were they safe to regroup if they're slightly wider? What type of information do we have access to? Also, just as important, what type of information do we give out to opposing teams? Like, do they know we're in this compound? What type of space do we have? Are we safe? Do we have 360 cover? What type of lines do we have? Lines are a bit more of a complicated topic, but lines essentially is just positions that lead to other positions. 
that we can fight through. And then our rotations. Did we rotate in a way that allowed us to get into positions safely and without running into too many teams, right? So macro errors are by far the most important thing to focus on in VOD review. You want to think about this as the platform to improving. We shouldn't worry about micro too much because micro mistakes are always going to happen. The less macro mistakes we have though, the better because macro mistakes subsequently lead to micro mistakes because if you're in rough positions, you have more stress, you don't know what you're doing, obviously you're going to make more mistakes, right? So let's focus on macro and I'm actually going to uh, go over a game really quick to show you what a hopefully a good VOD review looks like and get some key takeaways. All right, so I have one of my OCE teams I coach, and I think this is a really good game to take some, get some takeaways. But uh, they looted airport, they rotated in really nicely, a safe path, and they're being slightly efficient, not perfectly. They could be a little bit quicker, but once this zone pops, right, this is a key. This is where we can learn things, right, because we make decisions. The second zone pops, circle two, we need to make a decision. So this team has scouted this compound, right? So we will go and look at that compound and see what angles and everything it can actually observe. So when we look at this compound, we need to look at it from an analytical perspective. So this compound is slightly low ground slash, it's not elevated very well. So we don't really get any vision onto anything that we really wanna see, right? Even from this second floor, we can barely see the doors and uh, any presence from these warehouses and whatnot. Right, so we need to make a decision. Do we want to control the space around us? What does that look like? Well, the compound itself actually has a lot of bad terrain around it in the sense that teams can get quite close to you if you don't control it. Like teams could hide all along this ridge if they have all the north or east control. They have access to this rock. They have access to this ridge. And they're going to fight for our line, right? So we need to think about how maybe positioning people outwards can push other teams away and create more space for us because this compound itself actually has from what i see right now i've never played through this side but a pretty good line we have a lovely ridge to pull up onto which then gives us vision onto all of these ridges in the center of the zone when we look at the twire right so all of these ridges then give us access to the next ridge and what does this ridge give us access to Maybe this ridge, right? So we're looking at our fighting lines and we're trying to understand how to play this exact zone again, right? Because the first time we play a zone, we're gonna have no clue how to play it most of the time. It's pretty much on the fly. But if we ever play from the east to west side of this game, we're gonna know next time, to make sure to defend our back, pull up on this ridge, and then fight through all of this terrain. There may not be more access or more scouting spots but if we do decide to play on the edge, we need to control our space so we can keep access to our line. So now that we have a better idea of what the terrain coming in from this way looks, we have a pretty good understanding that we have a good access point to center of the zone, right? And we're quite happy with that because most of the time, having access to center is always going to lead to hopefully a good game. So if they're formanning in this compound, that's probably not the best setup, right? Because when we discussed it, and looked at the, the terrain, you don't actually maintain much control uh, if there's teams around you. If there's teams all around you, you might struggle. So should we set maybe outwards and try and force teams to either rotate all the way around us or head south? That's probably, in my opinion, what the best thing might be to do. In saying that, I haven't had many zones up here, so I don't have experience, but just from my understanding of the game and how the game should be played, that's pretty much how I think we might want to play this particular zone. Now they do nothing, which, <laughs> which is fine. It happens, right? Because this team kind of scared them. But it doesn't matter because they, even though their macro wasn't fantastic in terms of spreading out, they started to do the right thing. Krusty's spreading out, but he's identified that we don't have control and we have we let teams get closer to us. And we understand that, which means we can regroup and play passive. We have a clear line as we looked into this area. So when zone pops and we're completely out, we shouldn't panic at all because we know we can play into this side, which is exactly what the boys do. And they can, from there can identify that this compound is quite weak. So they can then 
decide a play on what they want to do for the next pop. And this is where micro comes in more than macro because we have been able to make the correct decision macro wise. And now all it takes is micro. We need to take our fights. We need to f make sure we stay four up and not die. So that's exactly what the guys do. They do a fantastic job this game of clearing out their side, taking fights, and they eventually just clean up the game and they really actually shit on these teams. But anyway, when we take away from these games, we need to think about the terrain that we're playing around, the lines our compounds possess, the space, the control, and we can really do this quite easily by simply going into the replay to tool and looking at a 2D perspective. So when we look at this game from a 2D perspective, we might think that we should be getting more angles and information early game, right? Absolutely, we could do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we don't do that, we know now that we have quite an easy line this way. So if they have this exact zone again, and they don't have access to space or control, and they have to sit in this compound and wait, in maybe other zones, they may have a much easier time and a better understanding on how to play this game. And that is how we've got to read properly, is understanding how to play in future games, because we can only learn from our mistakes. All right, so just key takeaways to remember, when we're looking at Vodaview, we should be discussing our micro mistakes and looking at how small things add up and how we can work better together as a team. So we don't focus too much on this. These mistakes always happen, no matter what, every game pretty much someone makes a micro mistake. We don't wanna harp on it. It's not the focus of the game because it's probably not gonna happen again, hopefully, All right? What we should be taking on and remembering is our macro mistakes, determining if micro mistakes were a result of poor macro, right? Because everything links together, right? Bad macro will lead to poor micro most of the time. We need to think about our early game positioning and how that affected our late game outcomes, right? We need to have a better idea of what our compounds give us access to and what type of vision, control, space, everything gives us, right? So when we at view, we really need to think about the micro and the macro and how they work together, right? Let's not focus on outcomes saying we died. Why did we die? It's super easy to do that, but it's not very productive and you're not gonna learn but by breaking it down and really getting into the smaller things that add up, you're gonna have a better understanding and hopefully learn more.